peace and the mercy and blessings of God be with you. I am your uh, brother in faith, Shabir Ali. For this segment of Let the Quran Speak, I'd like to talk about the recent controversy that arose in Toronto and elsewhere, uh, where in, uh, some mosques began to broadcast uh, the adhan or the call to prayer uh, using loudspeakers uh, for the benefit of those who are outside of the mosque. Now, um, it, it is a um, common practice in, in Muslim mosques everywhere that the adhan or the call to prayer is announced uh, at least within the mosque. In Muslim countries, they are broadcast in public. And uh, if you have traveled to a Muslim country, perhaps you have heard uh, the, the adhan out loud. And if you're watching a movie and uh, the camera turns to a Muslim uh, majority setting, you might hear the adhan uh, there, the call to prayer, uh, going in Arabic, something like this, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Uh, usually it's uh, given in a melodious voice, <laughs> not my sort of uh, scratch voice um, <clears throat> by, by some young um, um, callers who are, are uh, very well practiced at, at this. Sounds beautiful, we all enjoy this. Now, the controversy arose in the Toronto area because uh, some uh, city councillors uh, gave permission to the Muslims to broadcast uh, their call to prayer uh, at, for at least for, for, for just one prayer in the evening, um, which is referred to as the Maghrib prayer that occurs uh, just after sunset. Uh, and uh, that is in consideration of the fact that uh, we are basically under lockdown. People cannot go attend the mosques as usual. Uh, uh, Muslims, like uh, everyone else, are suffering from this uh, uh, need to be um, uh, practicing physical distancing. So we cannot attend our mosques and offer our prayers there, just as Christians are not allowed to go to their churches and have congregations. So what do we do in this situation? Some people are uh, becoming overly anxious. Some people may be suffering from uh, anxiety and uh, mental disorder. Uh, so as a, as a compassionate uh, offering to uh, Muslims, uh, the city councillors saw it fit to say, OK, you can broadcast this one prayer uh, using your loudspeaker so that passersby will hear it. Muslims cannot go into the mosque to pray, but at least they will hear it. And that will be a, sor a source of solace and comfort uh, at least for them. And so they were willing to relax the usual noise uh, bylaws uh, in order to make this accommodation for Muslims. Many saw this as a good thing, many Muslims and non-Muslims. Some mosques began to broadcast the prayer and uh, Muslims would, uh, in passing by the mosques and hearing the prayer, would feel some sense of comfort and uh, some of the pain from knowing that the mosque is closed to worship uh, is being eased uh, by this. Now, uh, some non-Muslims on the other other hand, uh, uh, who may have a history of uh, objecting uh, to things Islamic, or, or maybe not. In any case, uh, many, uh, some, some non-Muslims uh, saw it fit now to oppose the, this uh, ruling uh, from the local city councillors. And um, uh, th this now is a controversy. So let's think about that and let's be reasonable, reasonable about this. Um, how should we view this? First of all, as Muslims, we should be aware that as Muslims, while we have our right to, to worship uh, freely in this country, uh, we should not abuse that privilege and we should not disturb our non-Muslim neighbors in any undue uh, fashion. So if our call to prayer is going to be a disturbance for others, then it would be better not to avail of that uh, permission to broadcast the, the, the call to prayer, but rather we should keep it uh, as low as would be reasonable and, and make sure that our neighbors uh, and their rights are being looked after and that our neighbors are happy with us as well. Because after all, we are ambassadors of our faith and we want uh, people around us to be happy uh, knowing that Muslims uh, are there and Muslims are performing good services for the community at large and that Muslims uh, and their prayer uh, are, are benign and Muslims do not harm anyone, not even uh, with uh, our loud voices, even though we're saying something good uh, with the call to prayer. Now, for our non-Muslim friends, we'd like to appeal to you as well uh, to have uh, compassion and understanding for this issue. Uh, first of all, we should be aware that uh, Canada, having a long history with Christianity, uh, already has permissions in place for Christian churches, at least some churches, uh, to ring their bells at certain times. And uh, while this may be disturbing to some others, whether Muslims or Hindu or Buddhist or 
or others. Uh, nonetheless, this is already a part of the landscape, and we accept that. Uh, we, we, we don't want to argue against that. Uh, naturally, uh, the city councillors, looking at this from a broad perspective and uh, seeing that there is no need to discriminate uh, in favor of or against any one uh, faith community, uh, naturally, they look at it and say, well, if we can allow that for churches, uh, why could we not allow that for mosques? And maybe something comparatively similar uh, for, for um, uh, institutions belonging to other faith groups as well. So what's good for one should be good for the other. It's a free country and uh, everyone is uh, equal in, in the sight of the law. No one religion can be favored or disfavored vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, the others in such uh, a, a circumstance. The other thing that I would like our non-Muslim uh, viewers to be aware of is uh, what the Adhan uh, be, uh, does for Muslims uh, in a little bit more detail. Uh, first of all, the Adhan is a call to prayer. It announces to Muslims who live in the area uh, that the, the prayer is about to, to begin. Of course, one can uh, go with one's own watch. Uh, one can go with a, a reminder on one's uh, smartphone. Uh, one can even hear the Adhan nowadays, the call to prayer on one's uh, smartphone. But people tend to forget. Uh, but if they hear the, the call being broadcast from the mosque, that will be a reminder to them. So this is the purpose that it serves in the Muslim countries. People are reminded, they drop what they're doing, they hasten to the mosque, they go offer the prayer, then they can come back to what they're doing. Now, in our present situation of lockdown, while it is not uh, the habit in most uh, mosques to have the prayer broadcast out loud, it is indeed a source of solace for many Muslims to hear that call to prayer. Uh, why do we want to begrudge them that uh, small privilege and uh, that ease of anxiety in this time of great crisis. And of course, many non-Muslims may find that if the call to prayer is broadcast in a melodious voice, then that is pleasing to their ears as well. One last point needs to be mentioned about this. Uh, there is an adjustment that can be made to the Muslim call to prayer uh, in, the time of Christ, in a time of crisis like this one. It's known in our tradition that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, on occasion uh, uh, dictated for the caller to prayer to say to Muslims, pray in your homes. So normally the call to prayer will say, Hayya uh, ala salah, which means come to the prayer. But the modified version reported as instructed by the Prophet, peace be upon him himself, is as salatu fi rihalikum. The prayer is to be done at your home. And that's for special circumstances. In his uh, time, the circumstance was excessive rain. And in that circumstance, it would have been too muddy for people to trudge through and get to the mosque. And so permission was given uh, for the prayer to be done at home and the call to prayer to reflect uh, that permission. We, we are in such a circumstance now and seeing this circumstance in some Muslim countries, for example in Kuwait, it has been reported that uh, the call to prayer has been modified uh, to basically say to Muslims, pray at your homes. Now normally the call to prayer is delivered in the Arabic language as traditionally, the, uh, traditionally it has been done, but it translates into saying God is the greatest, God is the greatest, there is no God but God, Muhammad is the messenger of God, come to prayer, come to success, uh, God is the, the greatest uh, and there is no God but God. So uh, many will find that there's nothing objectionable uh, about this Muslim call to prayer. In fact, uh, I look forward to the day when Muslims uh, will uh, announce the call to prayer even in the English language and also in, in a modified, uh, in, in a melodious voice uh, so that uh, even non-Muslims will appreciate it more and understand its meaning and uh, message. So uh, that's all I wanted to say about this controversy. I wish that this controversy will go away and Muslims and non-Muslims both have to work hand in hand together uh, to minimize controversy and to bring everyone together, Muslims and non-Muslims, uh, as we are together all facing the same anxiety, the same crisis, uh, the same threat of COVID-19, and we need to band together to work together for the common good of all human beings. It starts with understanding, uh, with tolerance, and with mutual respect. I'm your brother in faith. Shabir Ali for this segment of Let the Quran Speak. For more segments of Let the Quran Speak and to support our show, uh, go to our website, please, www.quranspeaks.com. Peace be with you.